subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for watching more video. We have seen two transactions in the previous two set of videos. The first one was to create a purchase order. The second one was to receive the goods against that purchase order. After the vendor sends us the goods, he's going to also send us an invoice, which is basically a bill. So it says, you're going to pay so much and so much for this set of goods. Right? The bills, invoices mean the same thing. Invoice is more of a you know business standard term. Bill is something that we use in common language. So how does an invoice look like? It's going to look like this. It will have a date and then invoice number and then who is being billed, where the goods were being shipped, when is the payment due, what are the materials, in what quantities, what is the total, right? At $4, if the quantity is 1 or 10, the total is 40, and the total gets listed there. And it will also tell you where you need to send the check to. This is a very simplified version of an invoice. You could make it as complicated as you can. Where do you enter an invoice? Again, you always create an invoice with reference to the purchase order. That's how we typically do it. Go to follow on functions here. Under purchasing, under follow on functions, right adjacent to goods receipt, you have invoice receipt. The transaction code for that is MIRO, M-I-R-O. So just double click that and here you can enter a date like so, right? And then an amount and before you even do that, you should enter the purchase order against which you are trying to create this invoice. You can copy and paste it if you know it or if not, you can always go and search. Who's the vendor? 1222, right? Hit execute and it will list you all the invoices or all the purchase orders that have been created for that vendor. So select your purchase order and select copy, right? Hit enter. And what's the amount here? 400. So enter an amount of 400. That's how much we want to receive the invoice for. Hit enter. Right? All your messages are typically gone. Now, you don't need to hit OK here. It's it's an optional entry. But when you receive the goods, you got to always hit item OK. But when you're receiving the invoice, this item OK is optional. Click Save. There you go. You got the document number created, which is the invoice that we have received that we are documenting into the system. This does not mean that we have paid him already. We're just receiving the invoice and documenting it under document number 5105, blah, blah, blah. Right? So you go to Miro, enter the date that we received the invoice, and get the PO number, enter it here or you can search for it and enter the amount in the PO and until you enter the amount, the message is going to say red, which means it's asking you to enter that amount. Once you enter that amount, balance becomes zero and it's ready to be posted. Once you save it, your invoice is posted. This is how you receive the invoice. And you can always see it in the PO history. If you go back and look at displaying the PO and look at, it will show you a PO number that was created most recently. And if you look at the tabs here, you don't see the PO history tab, right? In order to open a previous purchase order, click on this button. It says other purchase order. 
select that and then you could go and copy and paste it if you know the number or you could search for it you could search for it using the search button in this case i know the purchase order number so i'm gonna select that and you're gonna see the purchase order history right so you have a material document which was created during goods receipt and you have an invoice receipt which was created just now so that's how you see the PO history for goods receipt and invoice receipt and this is the button that you use to open a previously created purchase order and this button to create a new PO to open existing PO so overall what have we done in the first video we have created a PO in the second video we have created a goods receipt against the PO remember it's always with reference and in this video we are creating an invoice again with reference to purchase order right always with reference to the purchase order remember let's do an exercise on invoice receipt the first question is what is a transaction code to create an invoice receipt simple second question does PO history show the invoice detail posted you've just seen this <laughs> third question is what happens when the difference amount is large difference amount meaning the difference amount between what has been posted versus what is the original PO amount the fourth question is do you have to check the OK box at the line item level of the invoice we have just discussed that alright so let's see um, the answers to the exercise what is a transaction code to create an invoice receipt the transaction code to create an invoice receipt is MIRO M I R O the second question is does PO history show the invoice details posted of course it shows the invoice receipt against the PO just open the PO open PO history and you'll see the material documents and invoice receipts right there the answer is yes third question is what happens when the difference amount is large what is it what what do I mean by the difference amount there say the invoice received is 50% more than the expected value of the PO so when you put the purchase order number in there the value is 400 right and what is the expected invoice if it is 400 everything is okay the balance is zero but if you put in 410 and check if everything is okay by hitting on the simulate button <clears throat> you'll see that there are messages here so the balance is not zero SAP based on the configuration allows you to have a certain level of tolerance meaning when you expect an invoice of say 400 there could be a certain tolerance level depend that depends on the settings that have been done in SAP most of the time there is a certain level of tolerance say 5% or 2% but if not there is a certain way to balance the excess amount okay so whenever you receive an invoice where the expected price was 100 and the incoming invoice is not 100 it could be like um, you know 110 or 150 or 190 depending on the percentage of variation the system responds with different kinds of messages and those messages are based on the type of configuration you have done you can see the messages here in the messages section we're gonna learn more about this when we go through the invoice receipt chapters but for now just understand that depending on the configuration a tolerance is set the tolerance percentage specifies the percentage variation that's allowed between the expected price and the actual receipt from the vendor so the answer here is it depends on configuration
configuration. Fourth question is, do you have to check the OK box at the line item level? This is the OK box I'm talking about. Do you have to check it? No. You can just say 400, 400, and then click Save. Without checking the OK box, the system will take the invoice. Right? See the invoice number here. The answer here is no. Okay, that finishes up the exercise.